Uh, I put a copy of the annual performance report uh, in front of you there, and, and uh, we can go through this so you can see where, where we are for last year's information. Um, if you go to the, the first page there then, uh, which is page two, uh, it gives you the information for graduation rate, which again, JRTC, this isn't who graduated our program, it's total graduation rate from your students to your high schools um, there uh, with those numbers. So, you know, it looks good. You had 100% graduation rate on time um, with last year's group. Uh, the other two items on the page do not apply to us because we don't have the English, the math, and the science here. So those, those are empty, do not apply to us. If you go to the page three, we then get to post-program placement. Uh, the state wants you to be 93% and above. As you can see, we were 90.38% um, with it this year. So we are below what they wanted, and we will have to mark that in our local plan and, and work on that. Um, it's not usual that happens where we usually do very well with that. A couple things we, we didn't, there are certain students we didn't reach to give us that information. There are about 15 students I think that um, we didn't get a hold of, didn't get back to us for that information. Whether they would have given us all good numbers and the, the percentage would have been diluted and moved up, or were they still out of work and out of school also, who knows. Uh, but with this year, when we had to do this in April and May and June, when we were working on these numbers, mainly May and June, because it came out late April, I think, um, we had certain students because of COVID that had lost their jobs. And when you ask, are you employed? And they say, no, you know, you have to mark them down as no. Are you in school? Well, they still would have been in school if they were, even though they would have been virtual. So we did lose in that percentage. Uh, that is one of the things we have to work on. Um, the next line down, program completed response rate, we always get past the 75. We're normally up in the 90s or close to 90. But again, this year was very difficult. And it, it gets more difficult to get students to get back to us about that. Um, but we did make that one. Uh, the next one down is another one as, for those of you who have been on the board for a while, you know we never make this. Uh, well, this one actually we did, this part of it. They changed things this year. There were two non-traditional categories before. One of them was the number of students we have coming into our classes, and another one was the completers of the classes. Well, they eliminated that first one, and this is completers. And again, these are students that would have completed two levels of the program. Not that they were considered our JRTC completers. We require them to finish the three levels of the program to be a JRTC completer. But in the state's eyes, they're a completer if they finish the two sequence. All right, so if someone finished Culinary Arts 1 and didn't take Culinary Arts 2, they're considered a complete. So some of the numbers we get benefit from and some we get hurt from because whether they're the non-traditional or not. Uh, but we were at a 12.28% and the state wants us to be 28%. Uh, again, we always encourage students um, to take the courses they want and we encourage the non-traditional and when they mean non-traditional that means it's a um, a trade where it's less than 25 percent uh, of those individuals in that uh, so that would be the females in welding the males in nurse aid program and so forth uh, but that's that would be our completers that we had that finished the program we had seven out of 57 uh, that uh, were considered Completers. If we go to the next page, uh, page four, it talks about the attained recognized uh, post-secondary credentials. And this whole area here, as you can read down, you can see what the baseline target is on the right-hand side and in the middle where we were. We did very well um, with, with all those targets for all CTE completers and then also for the special populations completers. So we're, we're in good shape with all of that. Then the next page, page five, uh, at the top there is talking about the work-based learning. And we were fine with that. They want 10%. And uh, we were at 14.06% for all completers and 15.63% for the special populations completers. 
And then the technical, technical skill attainment, you know, doing the 80% of the competencies and being able to do all that. And we're, again, we were fine with that with 100% um, this year. And then the very last page there on the back, it just gives you everything on one sheet of paper so you can see what we did and did not meet. And you can see the two things that were not met um, that you know, we will put into our plan and, and uh, put plans for working on that. The post-program placement for this year, all three, Allegheny, Covington City, and JRTC so did not make that one. And then we each had another thing that we didn't make. You know, so. We're all in the same boat with that one. But again, the key is putting students in classes that they want to be in for their careers, not forcing them into something that they don't want. So. All right, does anybody have any questions on our annual performance report? I have a question like, so for the non-traditional program concentration, what are you, well, I guess what is being done to try to help students figure out where they want to be as far as a career and you know could this be an avenue for them well when they come and visit us you know we we talk a lot on the non-traditional we give them the information um, for for the students you know, to, to be in what they want uh, we've also worked with guidance counselors in the past if I had one guy in level one first semester and one guy in level one second semester why not put both the guys in the same grouping so that there's more than one they feel a little more comfortable because sometimes we lose them because um, they're by themselves <coughs> so trying to get students to be more grouped if we can with with certain with certain areas um, but uh, the main thing is that they're doing a program they want to do you know, I know their counselors work with the counseling with the academic plans and all that type of stuff uh, they work with students on that too. And I think to that end, the best thing that we can do here at RTC and then the schools and the guidance department is just make sure that those non-traditional students that are interested know that, hey, there are some of these other avenues that you haven't thought about uh, and, and making sure that you put that out there. I think maybe historically, uh, you, you would know better than I, but I mean, going back many years, there may have been some exclusion for you know, girls in carpentry or, or boys in, the, in child care, so. Or it, exclusion is probably too strong. It's just assuming that there wasn't an interest there. That that way. Yeah, I, since I've been here, you know, I have not been aware of anything like that. I mean, the students know what their options are. Um, and that, you know, boys and girls doesn't matter. I, we used to always talk it up. Uh, one of my past instructors for automotive, he tell the kids, my female students are my most attentive students, you know, because because they were more to the detail, you know, just for whatever reason there, but they were more detailed with what they did. So he made sure that he talked that up when the kids were coming through um, to let them know that, hey, this is for you. This can be for you. We used to, and then we started thinking that well, maybe it's a detriment. I used to send the students around when they went to visit the classes I had boys and girls separate. So I had just girls that were visiting the door at one time and just boys visiting the door at the next time as they went to the rooms to go around and the instructors and students and everybody talked to them and everything. But then we felt like that was, wasn't was working the way we wanted. So we, we have the mix of boys and girls now. But we still talk non tradition uh, to the students when they come through the world. Um, and, and when you have certain students doing things like like our welding hannah several years back with welding she was our strongest welder she was a female you know the kids get to see that and realize okay yeah i can do that so we would want them to be able to see all of that in here do, do they have like a is there a way you know you can get them to try things so they can actually try before it you know, and knock it you know we, we they might find out they might like it and that might be something they would like to do we don't have that ability here. I mean, we, with, with the classes we can do, we do our level one, two, and three. We, we can't do a wheel here. Yeah. Is it something they could do at the lower level middle school? Possibly. I don't really know fully what they do at those levels um, to, to work students through different things. 
but yeah, those those possibilities are definitely there to to get a nine week or six week or whatever feel of something. Yeah. Now, obviously, they couldn't do welding there, but they do make these virtual welders, which we don't have because we want to do the real thing here. But for a younger kid, they could work with it if someone knew how to teach them to do that uh, at that lower level. Uh, but for us, you know, we've got one person per program and they're maxed out with what they can do um, with the courses that we do have. So we don't have the opportunity to throw that extra in there. Uh, we do, do we, at Allegheny we have the Ag uh, class which is very similar to that and offers welding, some carpentry, as, long, as well as all the other Ag related things. So. students. Do all the students go through it, or is it just something? No, but, but those students that, that are interested can definitely take that. <coughs> and it's like the wheel. I mean, when I was in eighth grade at Clifton Middle School, we had a wheel, technology wheel where you did a little bit of those things. And I think this is something that Melinda has talked about as well, that she would like to see more of that in the middle school and in lower grades, and I, I completely agree. I, I just don't, I agree with Mr. Spangler that the, Instructors here don't really have the time to host that type of thing. But I it would be a good idea. Then, then the middle school could be a catalyst to doing this wheel and, and getting people hands on so they can see what it's like before they really make a career choice. Or yeah. Focus in on one area. The, the problem is some of those kids try. You know? so the problem is a lot of these things are. are maybe a, a little dangerous for some kids so you have to find certain things like you definitely don't want a middle school kid working with a table saw or that type of thing so that yeah there are some the welders and things. issues i think i think even the welders i think it was like 16 16 is what we shoot for yeah 16. Yeah. any other questions I think it was a good report overall myself. It was good, you know, one kid can knock you 5% oh, yeah, and throw yeah. you under the bus, so. It's yeah, the smaller your numbers, the, the more yeah. one person makes a difference, exactly. And as we, as, as the merger comes and the students are a larger number, you know, these these uh, courses for a wheel or whatever, at the middle school level, you know, you have to see what is available, what would be good to, to do what would be available to them. I think in a, in a consolidated division, it would be easier to implement something at the middle school level because you only have to do it once instead of, instead of twice. So uh, I think we can look forward to that. Any other questions, comments? One item only because it seemed to be getting a lot of traction on social media. Uh, hear me out before you, <laughs> before you gasp. Um, <laughs> A, a division in Virginia, uh, not an immediate neighbor of ours, I can't remember exactly who, um, shared a signing ceremony that they did for job placement, that sort of thing. And there seemed to be a lot of you know local folks here that thought that, that was a wonderful idea. And of course, I'm, I'm, it's not a novel idea. It's something I'm sure we've either thought about or even tried to do before. But have, have we had any, um, I think a lot of times, those sort of things sort of organically come from the instructors and that sort of thing. Have we had any motivation we, or ability there? We haven't, we haven't done that before. I mean, we have recognized students for different things, but we have not done something like that. I did also get that. Uh, it was sent to me, and, um, and I sent it to the instructors and sent it out and asked, you know, do we have, do you have anybody that uh, we would look at doing this with? And, and I know, I think in your email, you had asked, you know, is this something between all three of us, you know, getting together for having a day for certain ones for certain programs, you know, which is which is fine, you know, to uh, do it standalone or do it as a group, you know, whatever whatever would work. So, if if we have students that are in that that line, because we do have a lot that go straight to the workforce or they go to what used to be called National Auto Diesel, or, you know, all that, you know, we have students that go to different places that you know, we can do something like that for. I didn't hear that there was conversation about that because, like I said, I think um, there was a lot of positive community reaction just in our area 
and it, it should be if if something like that can be done I mean it should be a it's a good way to spotlight what's being done here and the opportunities the students have um, but then it's also good for the for the kids themselves yeah, recognize that Absolutely. I mean they worked hard to get here and they're going to a seventy-five thousand dollar paying job straight out of high school or whatever it might be you know so it might catch people's attention to say hey you know why am I not doing that I remember doing a tour of the welding office and there was a check of one of the young people, persons that left here and his first paycheck was just $4,500 for a week's pay. Great. That wasn't a month pay, that was a week's pay that he had gotten. What field was that in? Welding. I mean, he had the, he had the skills, he took every extra thing he could do at night. He did a little bit extra I believe at Hobart Welding School, I think it was a six week stint to fine tune one thing he couldn't finish here. And that was it. That was it. So he yeah. Also a student the, the year that uh, our group won the national championship in team welding too. So, you know. It, he had a fabrication team, but he chose to just work on his skills and not be part of that team uh, that year. So yeah, no, we get, we get plenty of talent in all of our programs, you know, I mean, but you know, Definitely welding we hear about um, a lot too. And he also comes back uh, and does a, or, or has, I don't know what. what he did a couple of years ago. He did some things with the kids. Rome, Rome, Steam Fitters Union. And yeah, so, so yeah, I and mean, that's. So, what exactly, Mr. Eric, is where you, like, can you describe what it is that they're doing sign with the sign? basically a, uh, the same sort of uh, signing ceremony you see college or high school athletes when they sign on with a, a, a certain oh. program but it was it was basically that just with uh, I, I want to say in the, the article I read it was about one particular student who but I mean just even even groups of students basically the students sign on with an employer like hey I'm graduating the employer I'm the student the, the students parents family was there instructors all of that same again it was almost a clone of any athletic signing ceremony you've ever seen so yeah that's a pretty good idea so um, I, as far as I'm concerned I don't think that would be contentious at all but I mean let let the board know if there's anything you need from us if, if that opportunity okay. comes up we I think we'd all like to see something like that happen. Yeah, because it supports the, the CTE program here. Like, hey, man, we're producing quality candidates going straight to you know, good jobs. Absolutely.